ninety thousand dollars for 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 a new construction home that's not a trailer that's not a manufactured double wide that's manufactured yeah. offsite and brought in and then and then attached we're talking about full stick built with foundation slab foundation i'm guessing uh we do crawl space just so you can add on later. you do crawl space foundation yeah, too with that yeah because wow. we want you to be able to add on later. life could change you know you could be at 493 right now or wow or 600 right now yeah and you have two or three kids you want to add on another bedroom yeah make it easier for you to add on give me some of that real talk all right licensed as a real estate broker in 2012 and then i got into a fight with my parents one day I don't really want to call it a fight, though. Let's call it a, a scuffle or, or a kerfuffle, maybe. They said, you know what? You argue too much. You need to go to law school. I was like, yeah, whatever. So I decided to go, applied. I got in. I graduated, passed the bar, and I decided to keep going in this real estate game. And I love real estate. Let me tell you, every day I'm talking about it. My wife can't stand it that much. Um, she enjoys moving along with me, but she, after a while, she'll just nod her head. Okay, yeah, 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 I get that. But I have questions every single day. And I think everyone involved in real estate, no matter what level you're at, I don't know you. I don't know what level of real estate you're at right now. Maybe you just like throwing on the Snuggie and cuddling a little bit on the couch, watch a little HGTV, trying to find you a beachfront bargain hunt, maybe. Or maybe, 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 maybe you're DIY and you're trying to find yourself a tiny house big living. I don't know. But I think you've got questions, too, if you're involved in this real estate. I'm Justin Kazepis. You are listening to Today's Real Talk, todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com. And I'm excited today because we are launching the first episode of this podcast, and we have got some game changers for you. Game changers? What do you mean by game changers? I think that there should be an avenue for everybody who's got an idea, everyone who has some type of innovation, anybody who's got anything that can contribute and help out this profession. So if you're a game changer, head over to todaysrealtalk.com. Fill out that form. Click on Game Changers, todaysrealtalk.com. Let us know. We'd love to get you on the show and talk about you. I'm very excited because of the fact of the guest we have today is someone who is a game changer. A term you're going to hear if you've Googled real estate at all. I guess I shouldn't just limit it to Google. I guess I should say Bing as well if there's any Bingers out there. Uh, but if you've Googled real estate, a topic has come up, affordable housing. Okay, And affordable housing, we're going to break down a little bit about what that means and why why is it a concern right now? And it's got to start, I think the best place would be the market crash of 2000. Really, five is when it started. It kind of hit North Carolina, which is where we are. Around that 2008, 2009 mark is when it really hit home here. And what that was was you had people getting loans for properties and buying properties that just to be quite frankly honest, what should not have been buying homes, right? You weren't qualified, yet you told a mortgage lender, hey, you know what? I would love to be able to make $3,000 a month. Okay, great. We'll put that on your 1003, your loan application, right? That's what we're going to put on there. We'll get it through the underwriting. We'll get you a house. And then all of a sudden, jobs start creeping back, right? The jobs market kind of gets hits a little lull. People start defaulting on all their mortgages, right? A great movie to watch if you haven't seen it, The Big Short. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but if you haven't, you got to watch this movie. A great depiction of what happened when the mortgage crisis took place. And then all of a sudden, when the market starts recovering, about that 2012 time frame, which is when I got back and got into this game. Now, I grew up with real estate. My family's been involved with real estate, so it's been in my blood. It's been in my genes for, for, for decades. My dad started off in the 80s in California. Stick him in Leadwell. That's what he used to say. I still don't know what that means to this day, but that's what he used to say to me every day. So, so then coming back to 2012, and the market starts creeping back up, and everything's going hot, right? Because people can finally afford a house again and the prices are so low and money is so cheap that now it's like oh my gosh why aren't we investing in real estate forget the stock market right now forget mutual funds and and bonds and cds which were at an all-time low as far as return and people were making it hand over fist in money in real estate foreclosures forget about it foreclosures were a hot topic and there was some people who could afford it but people were scared right because when that crisis happened if you're involved in that and if you're someone who lost your home in that time frame, real estate probably is a very, very, very sore subject for you. But I hope you'll be encouraged by this show because we want to talk about some of the things that will help keep you out from trouble 
And today we're going to start off with affordable housing. But but where we go from here is anybody's guess, because I think you should make that decision. I think you should be the one to decide, OK, if I've got questions in real estate, what what are those questions? And tell us about it. Tell me about it. Today's real talk.com. Go on there. What are you thinking? What are your questions? And we'll bring it up. Now, back to 2012, the market starts creeping up. And now we're here, sitting here today. It's 2018. And I think everyone's lost their minds. I, I think as far as real estate goes, I think that this this is on fire. Un fuego, un fuego, un fuego. North Carolina specifically right now, I don't know, it's, it's got to be the drinking water. That's the only thing I can think of because right now inventory is so low and there are so many buyers in the marketplace. What does that mean? That means that housing prices are skyrocketing. And that's what leads us to affordable housing because, 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 because it's a simple supply and demand. Now, I'm not going to act like I'm some economist who sits in my chair and sips my bourbon on the evenings. No, 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 no. I took an economics class in college. Second one I tried to take thinking I was all smart, I failed out of. So I'm going to give you the basics here, supply and demand, right? So supply is your inventory. That's how many homes are available. Demand, that is how many people want those homes. So simple math, if there is not enough supply compared to the to the demand, there's more people wanting to buy than there is inventory, right? Prices go up. That's supply and demand. And that is where we're at right now. I'm looking at these, and we're going to put this a few links on, on the, the podcast description page. So if you're on todaysrealtalk.com, check out, scroll down the page and make sure you look at this. I'm going to start with the Charlotte Regional Realtor Association. They're, they are a the regional realtor association for this Charlotte, uh, Lake Norman kind of outskirts um, area here. And they cover several of the marketplaces. And in fact, um, I'm also a real estate attorney, so Kazepis Law, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm not really trying to get into that right now. But Charlotte Regional Realtor Association is the one who pr puts together the statistical data as it relates to the MLS stats here in our area. And I'm looking at this thing, and I got to tell you, inventory of homes for sale. I'm looking at the April 2018 report right now. Inventory of homes for sale is down compared to 2017 across the board. So what does that mean? Year over year over year, supply is going down, right? So a month's supply of inventory is another category that they work on, and those are also down. Now, there's a couple of them in here that are up, um, but a majority. And when I say a majority, I think there's maybe one to three in this entire report that has a positive percentage of inventory and month supply. Now, the reason for those positives, I would say, are those are very rural areas that have not seen the development in the past yet, and they're just now getting that. So that's why you're seeing those upticks. But the major marketplaces, I mean, I'm talking your Mecklenburg counties, your Iredell counties, Gaston, Lincoln, Catawba, uh, Union County, which is hot fire right now, um, a lot of places are down as far as inventory and month supply. And it is causing chaos and pandemonium. And and there's another stat that that kind of makes me a little nervous. And I got to be honest here. So I told you I was a real estate broker for four years. I went to law school. I started a law firm and, and, and I've now switched sides. So I, I'm accustomed to what being a real estate broker entails. I know what that game's like. Um, I've got a good friend, Bill Gallagher, who always says, hauling and hoping, driving and showing, sitting and wishing, praying and pitching, right? That's what real estate brokers do. And I'd hate to take his line. I'm gonna have to give him a credit for that one. Um, but sitting here now on the attorney side and working with all the real estate brokers rather than just individual clients, a lot of people don't know what to do right now, and that's a problem in the marketplace because when you've got 66,000 active real estate brokers in a marketplace that has astronomically low inventory, you're bound to have some problems. And I say that because education is a big, big component to me. I mean, it's very, very important. You want to change your life. You want to do something different. You want to change your game. Get some education. There's too many free tools out there for us to complain and worry about it. No, 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 no. We don't discriminate at this table. We bring everybody's got a seat as long as you bring a solution. I don't want to talk just about the problems. Yes, we have to address the problems, but we got to bring some solutions to the table. This isn't a soapbox style show. I'm not going to just sit here and complain. So the market inventory here, like I said, inventory is low across the board. Month supply of inventory is low across the board. 
and and I and I get into the to the fact of okay, so let's talk about the Charlotte area. Let's talk about the Lake Norman area. So so it's all market specific, right? I mean, obviously, what you're doing in California is going to be different than what you're doing in North Carolina. What you're doing in New York is going to be different than what you're doing in Florida. Markets are different, and that's the best p- uh, part about the market is every market is its own. But looking at the National Association of Realtor Stats, and this is another report, we're going to put this link um, on the podcast page. I'm looking at sales by price range. And this is where the National Association of Realtors has categorized of the homes sold, what price range do they fit into? And the number one price range, 100000 to 250000 I think that's a very accurate statistic of 41%. 41%, almost half of all homes sold, 100,000 to 250,000. That's a national statistic, nationally speaking. And it's no different here in, in the Charlotte, Lake Norman area marketplace because if, you get, if you're looking at that 250 range, forget about 100,000. There's barely, and I, don't, I don't even know what you're going to find. For, you might find some raw land for 100,000. But you get into that 250 price range here in this market, flying off the shelves, left and right, every which way. Prices are going higher and higher and higher. So what is the solution to this problem? And I, I do think it's a problem because you, you look at what, what the market will define as a marketable sales price, right? That's what you'll hear. If, you're, if you've ever purchased a home and you've had to work with a lender, um, they have to do an appraisal on a home, right? And, and what you got to find is what is the market value of the home? Does the value of what you've offered to this seller as a buyer sustainable in this marketplace that a lender doesn't have to worry about getting their money back in a worst case scenario of you defaulting on your loan. Now, I will say, I don't think that we are in a normal marketplace because if you took a ready, willing, and able buyer, a ready, willing, and able seller, and you throw in the X factor of low inventory causing a ready, willing, and able buyer to have to be distressed and offer more than what the house is listed for, I would say that's not a normal market. But that's where we sit today, and we've got to find a solution. And I think, I think I've found a solution to the problem. Looking to build a YouTube channel to get leads and sales for your business? Real results can do that. Looking to create a podcast that positions you as a thought leader? Real results can do that. Are you looking for video content to help market your business online? Real results can do that. If you need help with marketing or even training videos, then it's time to get real. Realresults.io. All right, I am very excited now to be joined by Mr. Kelvin Young with Keo Tiny House, K E Y O Tiny House, Keo Tiny House.com, Keo Tiny House.com. You better go to the website, Keo Tiny House.com. Mr. Kelvin Young, how are you, sir? good buddy how you doing good man i appreciate you joining me man i am so excited about the product and service you got man i gotta tell you i've seen and i gotta full disclosure for people i gotta tell people full disclosure we do work together on a business capacity right and we have fun doing it too by the way i mean you know hey, 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 hey we have fun doing it but this model home i've seen of yours which you've now sold right right in the the charlotte area marketplace is beautiful thanks man Oh my gosh. I mean, you walk in the door and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go look at this tiny house. Today. Okay, let me go. I've seen, okay, I've seen DIY. I've seen HGTV. I didn't really know what to expect. Am I going to come up on a trailer sitting on the ground on some wheels with an axle? You're going to have like an 18 wheeler hooked up with this thing. Like, what are we going to be looking at? No, we're talking a full stick built, beautiful piece of craftsmanship. Congratulations to you, yeah, sir. Thank you very much. Thank so, you very much. So tell people about you, man, because because I, I, I think you deserve a real introduction into the marketplace. Um, been in, I've, since I've been in Charlotte for a long, I've been in Charlotte since like 1994. Um and a lot of it is is good old boy, you know, let's keep things the way they are. Let's not do a lot of change. And but like I said, man, we don't discriminate at this table. Everybody's right. got a seat as long as you bring a solution. And you have definitely brought a solution to the marketplace. So introduce yourself to the people. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelvin Young, Keo Tiny House. Um, just 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 that gentleman, man, that wanted to utilize my talent, my skills in the house building industry to bring a product that anybody can afford. Wow. You know? You know, that was my thing. I, I, I didn't want to build $500,000 houses. I didn't want to build a million dollar houses. I could, but it's not what I want to do. I wanted something where everybody can afford. People that grew up like me, um, you know, not having a lot, but thought you had everything. And uh, so I wanted, you know, something that my uncles, my cousins, you know, my friends, you know, people that work uh, for the city, people that work for the county, 
might not have the sixty thousand dollar a year job, but they love what they're doing and they make twenty five thousand dollars a year. They should still be able to afford a house. I mean, everybody shouldn't have to buy a two hundred, two fifty, three hundred thousand dollar house. Everybody can afford that. You know, I mean, there's in the greater Charlotte Concord area, there's forty six thousand millionaires. Mm. Right? Mm. But there's like over a million people in this market. Mm-hmm. So easily, easily. So there's not a lot of people who are really rich, but they control a lot. Right. You know, the top two percent of the of the country controls most of the money in the country. Mm-hmm. So somebody has to look out for the everyday person, and that's I grew up with everyday parents. I'm an everyday kid. You know, I've been to college. I have a bachelor's, master's, and all that stuff. None of that stuff guarantees you to be in a position of wealth or power. You know, it gives you experiences, but it doesn't guarantee you that you're going to be able to afford a $400,000 house. It, it doesn't. As much as we think the day before we graduate, well, you know, this big this big screen's going to roll back and it's like, yeah, man, I'm getting this $200,000 a year job. Let me step out to my full-time employment yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And then, then you end up working at a retail spot make $8 an hour. Yeah. You know, that's just the way it is. So now the opportunities are different. You know, the mindset is different. And my mindset was, okay. How can I make a difference in housing and not be like everybody else? You know, I felt like I've only been average one time, and that was in seventh grade when I sucked in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you don't want to see me on the court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to do that. But I was terrible in seventh grade. Uh, I was the fifteenth man on the team. The coaches told me the only reason they kept me because they was like, Kelvin, one day your legs had to catch up with your feet. And I was like, Wow, that's why y'all kept me on the team, huh? Well, on that seventh eighth grade team, I scored two points the whole year. Congratulations. Yeah. And Did you I, get a trophy, too? You probably got a trophy. I danced on the court when I hit the shot. <laughs> um, but by the time I was in 12th grade from that 7th grade team, I was the only player on that team that got a scholarship to college to play basketball. Wow. And it's just because of my work ethic. So that's the same with the houses. Um, I wanted to do something different, but my work ethic was like, you need to do something that's really different. So I decided to choose purpose over profit mm. and sell a product that anybody can afford. Well, you know what? You can make $22,000 a year and afford my tiny house. Mm-hmm. You can be a millionaire and afford my tiny house as a second home. Mm. You can be a middle-class person and afford my tiny house as your as your primary residence. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so many different walks of life that we can af- that we can affect with this product. But when you're such a new thing, sometimes it's kind of hard for people to understand it because of what they see on TV. Right. It's still people to this day think it's on a trailer. Right. That you can pull it. And there's that stigma with Tiny House. I mean, when you think Tiny House, you think a trailer. You think something that, oh, I don't have the time to go pull this thing around the country. I don't have any land that I can park this thing on. No, we're talking full stick-built homes that are going to have a certificate of occupancy with them. And I got to tell you, because in this marketplace, in the area we're at, when you tell me that someone who makes twenty five, fifty thousand dollars a um, a year can afford this home. And I've seen the inside of these. I'm talking beautiful appliances. You're talking granite. You're talking about tankless water heaters. You're talking about sixteen foot ceilings when you walk in the door. I mean you you got you're blowing my mind right now, man, right. because because there's gonna be builders out there. There's gonna be people that come at you and say, Whoa, whoa, wait a second, why are you selling these so cheap? Because some of the areas you're looking at selling, man, I got to be honest with you. If you look at average sales price of those areas and what you're going to be ac- asking for, I think people are going to get a little nervous. Like, 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 hey, Kelvin, the neighborhood's going to change a little bit. I don't know if we're okay with that right now. Right, right. And, and it's just wild to me that 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 is is your mindset. Because as most builders I've met, and I've met a few, you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of them are focused on that profit, right? It's it's dollars and cents game. That's what building is about. That's what that's what companies are about if we want to have a real conversation. The yeah. point of a for-profit corporation is to make money for its shareholders. Uh, but you've taken a different approach to it, and I think that's respectable, commendable, and I think you deserve the time to talk about it. Right, and I appreciate it. Well, the difference between me and probably the average builder is that, you know, um, this isn't something that was passed down to me. This isn't something that I was able to go to my mom and dad or go to someone else and say, I want to start building houses way. Nobody showed me anything. I, I've just, I started out flipping houses 11 years ago, and I've learned on my own. I've made all the mistakes. You know, my first house that I ever did, man, I thought it was a masterpiece. And now I look back at it, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> at least you can have the honesty to say yeah, that, too. You've better. learned along yeah, the yeah, way. I've gotten better with each house, you mm-hmm. know, um, and, and along the way. But the difference is, is that, man, when you grow up, um, you know, I grew up in my grandma's house until I was seven. 
mm-hmm. right? My grandma actually had a heat stroke in her house. That house had no air conditioning. Mm. Uh, we had no central heat in the air. We mm-hmm. had a pot belly stove that heated the whole house. Mm-hmm. Your air conditioner was you open up the doors and the windows mm-hmm. and let the air go through the house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so for me, and I was happy. Didn't yeah. ha- didn't think a thing in the world I was missing in life. Yeah. You know, I was happy there. Um, so when you grow up like that and, and, and you don't think about that this is something bad, it was great. My grandpa built that house uh, for my mom and her siblings. There's 10 of them. My grandpa built the house for fifteen hundred dollars. Wow! Yeah, back in those days, you had to if you built half the house, the bank would loan you the rest of the money to finish the house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So my grandpa built half the house, and then the bank loaned him fifteen hundred dollars to finish finish the rest of the house. Wow! You know, so when my grandmother died uh, when I was four and I was living there with her, we was actually taking a nap. Um, my parent, my mom moved back home. She was actually living in New York at the time. Moved back home, and we uh, we started living in my grandmother's house because she had two siblings to take care of. Right. Well, man, that was the happiest days of my life, yeah. man. Like, man, I had, you know, who knew I didn't have a hot water heater? <laughs> like, I, I didn't realize that until, like, recently. I was telling somebody, like, Dad, man, my first house didn't have a hot water heater. Yeah. It's all about perception. Yeah. And it's all about reality of what you expect. I, I've never expected to live in a 7,000-square-foot house right. that costs a half a million dollars. I don't need that to be happy. Right. It's no, not I'm, about the thing. It's not about the thing. It's about the opportunity that you have. Yeah. And that's what we're, we're building opportunities, man. Yeah. Like, if you got student loans, I'm probably your guy because Absolutely. now you have opportunity to pay those student loans back right. by hiring a, having a housing option. You don't want them just to go into more debt? You don't want that? No, I don't want no. them to go. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want them to have something affordable. Um, you have credit card debt. Yeah. I'm probably the house you need to buy because now you can own a home and still afford to pay down your debt. Yeah. So, you know, so our first home sold, um, the mortgage on our base model, um, if you get a lot, that's $20,000. You're going to be around $500 a month mm-hmm. for a house that you own. My goodness. The average one-bedroom rent in Charlotte is $1,100. I was going to say, man, rent prices, I don't even want to get into that ball of wax right now. Right. Just know they're going up. I mean, yeah. that, that's just yeah. what's happening. If, you're, if your lease is up for a renewal soon, your price is likely going up if you're renting a place. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's my whole thing is like, you know, it's like, okay, it's people who charge in tra- t- tiny, and I say tiny houses loosely because it's not a house if it's on wheels. Right. You know, it's a trailer. Right. So there's people selling tiny trailers on wheels for a hundred thousand dollars. Well, you're talking about three hundred square feet. Yeah. Then you gotta go find some land to put it on, then you probably gotta rent it. Right. Like in the trailer park. Right. Or R V park. That's not the option. Right. You know, that I'm looking for option is to build equity and, and, and have a home that you can afford and a mortgage. Because you can't get a mortgage on a tiny trailer. Right. You know, generally you, you can't get a, a standard mortgage. So you know, that's why I like my product and you know it's not for everybody no. but it could be for right. everybody you know if you think you need 4,000 square feet right because you got two kids it's not for you we have a lot of buyers who have two kids and they're going to live in 700 square feet or less or right. 600 square feet or less. and i think there's another phenomenon too that that your your that keo tiny house puts back into the marketplace which i love so as a kid for me my parents couldn't get me inside I was outside right. all day long playing on the street with all the neighbors. I was out there playing football, tag, and we would come to the house. Don't get me wrong. Like as kids, you know, my parents were always welcoming for everybody to come over if you need a snack, whatever. But I would be right back outside and they couldn't get me inside the house. And I think that's what you're promoting as well, whether you're meaning to or not, is this concept of we don't have to be so connected with the things when we could be outside enjoying. And I think that's a beautiful thing to push to. Justin, I think. You hit it, hit the nail on the head because that's our buyers. Yeah, our buyers. We have buyers that are homeschooling. Mm-hmm. We have buyers that just think about a minimum minimalist approach to life. Right. Every one of our buyers, they're all different in their walks of life, but they're all the exact same in their mental thinking. Right. Like there is a reason. That, I mean, eighty percent of our buyers are homeowners already, and they're like, "Why do I need this twenty eight hundred square feet? There's rooms in here, this house that we don't even go in. Right. Like they don't want the extra room." Right. I mean, most of our houses that people design because they're all custom. They have no hallways. Mm. You have, you no hallways. No hallways. No hall. You're talking about open concept. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about there's a door from the living area going into a bedroom. That's it. Wow. There's no wasted space. Wow. Like there's no wasted space. So uh, their whole mentality is different. Right. You know, they're thinking. You know what? Okay, I can do a two bedroom, one mm-hmm. bath. Mm-hmm. Have six hundred square feet. Okay. Right. My now my mortgage is going to be. 550, right. 560. Right. Okay. Now, 
I was, my mortgage was 1500 a month. So right. now I'm saving $1,000 a month. Right. Now I can pay That's off a my, big difference. That's a big difference. Now I can pay off student loans. Yeah. Now I can pay off Christmas. Now we can take that family vacation. Wow. Now we can do these other things and enjoy life. Right. You know, that's what we're about. You're enabling you know, people to live more. Why, why, why have a house that you barely can afford mm. just to say you have a house, but you can't live? Mm. You can't go anywhere. Mm. A tire goes flat on your car, and you're like, dang. I can't pay that. I can't get a new tire or mm-hmm. a new set of tires because I got to pay this mortgage. Mm-hmm. We provide an opportunity, man. I had a, I had a, I had a gentleman sitting into my tiny house and said, Kelvin, man, he said, you provide an opportunity to us. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate it. And mm-hmm. then we've man, When have you seen people crying to build a, to, to buy a house and build a home? Mm-hmm. And there's, and, and they're so joyful mm-hmm. because they never thought it could happen right. because they're choosing their passion right. as, as their work, Right. Or their career and not having to choose, I have to get another job just to afford a house. Right. That's what I love about it. And, and there's something there there's something out there and I'm a, and, and so I'm I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I, I did I researched you a little bit. <laughs> you know, I, I threw a good Google into it a, a few times trying to see what's going on. And there's something out there that's been bothering me that, well, that, that I've seen a couple things and I, I I creeped on you a little bit, let me mm-hmm. tell you the truth. I saw you on Varney and Company. Well, I, I saw you with Varney, and I wanted to call Varney after. I want to say, Varney, why did you why did you ask that nonsensical question? Dollar per square foot. There is this thought in the marketplace that your pricing and your home is going to bring down the marketplace. I have and 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 correct me if I'm wrong on this because this is your product. So I think that's foolishness for somebody to say that. To see the the well craftedness of these homes, I mean, you're talking, and, and I'm not throwing specific brands. Out. That's not what the point of this show is. But when I walked in and saw Samsung stainless steel appliances, like knock knock fridge style stuff going on in here, in a tiny house, which we're gonna get into the pricing here in a minute and how you start your model, but I was blown away, and and the the architectural capacity of these homes, and, and the facades, and the way you do the decks, and the way you you landscape with it, and and the different things that is for beautification of an area. Right. To think that a product like this would bring a marketplace down, I think what the real answer is is the haters are mad you're getting a higher dollar per square footage than they ever possibly could dream, no matter how high the, high their sales prices are. Right, and that's their problem. But I just wanted to address that because I think that that you deserve more credit than what you've been given on that. Whether you're, I know you're not asking for the credit, right. but I'm going to give it to you anyway <laughs> because I, th- I just, from a, a real estate investor perspective, I find that nonsensical. So Yeah, it, it, it is, man. You know, like, you know, people will say, well, it's going to bring down a value because of the size of the home. Well, if you really understand real estate, my comp or comparison will not be comparison to a 3,000 square foot house built in 1945. No. no. You know what I mean? That would, if, that, if, if that thought process were correct, then no neighborhoods would be gentrified. No new development be would be happening in these communities, because the house beside them might only be worth forty thousand dollars. Right. But they just built the house is worth two fifty. Right. And beside it, right. You know, right, right here near the studio, there is um, right near the studio, there's a four houses going on right now that are four hundred thousand dollars, and the houses beside them might will sell for eighty five thousand. So it's the and, and that's just the opposite side of it, like. Yeah. If that was true, if the values was they're not based on the value of this new house that's right. four hundred thousand right. off the value of this old house right. that's nothing like it. So I mean, yeah, it, it is and it's just with people's way of trying to um slow down the product. Well, and, and as a real estate broker, let me tell you back in my back in the day I'd go into a listing appointment, I'd sit at the table and say, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, you know, you're asking me what your house is gonna sell for. And the market is going to dictate what that is. Now, I've got the comparables. Don't get me wrong right. here. I am. I believe with a reasonable certainty I'll be within a, a, a range. But I think what's freaking people out here, and this is this is my honest opinion, and, and I don't have a crystal ball or anything like that. If I did, I'd live in Las Vegas and I'd be well off. <laughs> uh, but I think you're creating a new category. I do, because... There are tiny houses, and, and, and tiny house, what people think is, you know, around that under 500 square foot range, right? Like, right. that that's typically what you're going to see if you research and look into tiny houses, what that means. Now, you're for, we're going to get into that, too. We're going to bring, we're going to, on the next segment, we're going to bring you back, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But you're creating a new category, sir, and, and for that, I dub thee a game changer, and I right. appreciate you Thank for that. You very much. Yeah, absolutely. When we come right back, we're going to keep talking with Kelvin. I got a few more reports for you guys. We're also going to bring on somebody who understands the lending side of all of this, Mr. Levi Santos. He's going to come up here. He's going to talk with us as well. We're going to bring them both back, coming back at you soon. 
Hey, I'm Justin Kazepis, host of today's Real Talk. As I've mentioned, I'm also a real estate attorney. My firm, Kazepis Law PLLC, focuses on residential real estate closings. Taking my years of experience as a real estate broker, I have chosen to make quality of service the top priority for my law firm. Kazepis Law currently serves seven counties in North Carolina, Mecklenburg, Iredale, Cabarrus, Gaston, Lincoln, Catawba, and Union County. Find out more about my law firm, including scheduling your closing at residentialreclosings.com. That's residentialreclosings.com. And now let's get back to more of today's Real Talk. All right, welcome back to today's Real Talk, todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com. Justin Kazepis with you with some good friends in the studio. Now, I got to clarify something, okay? I don't want you getting fooled. I don't want you to think that I know everything, because I don't. And that's the reason for this show. I am but a humble servant in this game as well. I want to learn, though. I want to continue to learn. I want to continue to grow. And I want to continue trying to be the best at everything I do. So that's why we're here today. I found a great article online, too, because when I was researching, I was like, man, affordable housing, man, everybody's talking about affordable housing. I found this wonderful article on Forbes, and the contributor of it was Lawrence Yun. He's the chief economist of the National Association of Realtors. So this guy obviously has wow. some clout. Like, this guy's for real. So, And he started talking about the things and, and why we have the shortage, but he also talked about some of the solutions, right? Like, that's what we talk about. If you want to be a game changer on this show, todaysrealtalk.com, click on Game Changers, let us know you're there. But you got to have a solution, and, and Mr. Yun brought a couple solutions here. He gave us five things to think about as far as this housing crisis and, and one of them the number three on his list was relax land use and zoning rules um and i don't think we throw the playbook out the window i don't think you do that because you need long-term sustainability and that's a balance and i get that from a government perspective you got to have that balance um but there are creative ways and keo tiny house is one of those ways keo tiny house.com that's k-e-y-o tiny house.com and we've got someone else here levi santos with MVB, B as in boy, bank, MVB bank, and Keo Tiny House and MVB bank are working together on a couple of projects right now. And when I heard the numbers, because once again, remember, we're talking about new construction, full stick built home. The day you can move in is when you get that certificate of occupancy. And to hear what these loan terms are going to be, I said, wait a second, that can't be right. That can't be. What are you talking about? There's no inventory in the market and prices are going up and up and up. What do you mean that it can be this it, this inexpensive, this affordable of housing for people? So, Levi, thank you for joining us today as well. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. So I, I want to hear a little bit about your background. I don't want to get into everything on your background because there's a lot. We've been sitting here talking for a while, but you are very knowledgeable and I don't want people to be fooled by that. Um, in my opinion, age is only a number, right? And I'll say that till the day I die. Uh, but you have a plethora of knowledge when it comes to underwriting, mortgage loan origination, and the entire lending process. I mean, you understand the secondary market to a degree as well, which is a whole nother ball game that I would love to get into eventually on here as well. But tell people about what the program is that you and Keo are working on as far as to finance these projects. Sure, sure. So uh, the construction permanent pro product that we're using is really a option to ha what was initially initially used was for people building their custom homes mm -hmm. and having it where it's being the bill was being, or the, excuse me, the money that was mm -hmm. being used is being banked from the, used from the money's, the bank's money, mm -hmm. and not off the builder's um, overhead. Like construction draws. Like a construction okay, draws. Okay, gotcha. Exactly, exactly. The awesome concept about this all is that the product lined up correct, really perfectly for the tiny house type of, um, you know, bill. outlook. Right. Strictly because the way that, uh, the tiny house is set up mm -hmm. and how his um, his business platform is, is really, it's a custom built home. Yeah. And it's a brand new house and this is exactly what it's used. Yeah. So 
The construction loan, you know, some of the details around it is that you have have to have a minimum credit score of at least a 660. 660, that's it. for And because this is what gets me. We're talking about new construction right now. And you're telling me someone with a credit score of 660 can get a new construction loan. Yes. Okay. Your website's about to be blown up, Kelvin, because <laughs> that alone right there is going to get people going. And I'm not saying that we should put all the people who can't really afford houses into this bubble because 660 tells me we're talking about an FHA style program. No, not generally. No. I mean, we can go either FHA, you can go conventional, you can go VA. I mean, quite frankly, the whatever is available within the loan program, we can use it. Mm-hmm. Um, going v- VA, you can do 100% financing on a construction loan. On a FHA loan, you can do 3.5%. And on conventional, Fannie or Freddie would go... Right. Five percent, and that's the minimum. So, as far as 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 the loan goes and closing costs, because that that's what people want to know, right? Like, how much is this going to cost me? Because they're not thinking about the thirty year amortized, you know, monthly payment. Correct. That that they put that into its own category. But the what does it cost me to buy a Kio tiny home? You're saying people can put three and a half percent down, and that be the cost of them getting a Kio tiny home potential. Exactly. So then that begs the question, Kelvin, we got to ask you then, how does your pricing structure work? What? Okay, let's ballpark me here. So let's say I, I, I want to go with, what, what's your minimum package square footage? What is your? 493. 493 square foot. Okay, which is in that 500 ball range as far as for a tiny house now. It'll be a beautiful one. Let's say I wanted to go about seven, 800 square feet. Let's do that. What is that? One bedroom, two bedroom? What can you I get can, with that? Uh, you can do two bedrooms, two baths, two bedrooms, one bath, three bedrooms, one bath, three bedrooms, two baths. Dang. It's, it's totally up to you, you know, so... You know, at that one, at that um, around 700 square feet range. Yeah. For just a house. Yeah. You're gonna be around ninety something thousand dollars. Ninety thousand dollars for 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 a new construction home that's not a trailer, that's not a manufactured double wide, that's manufactured yeah. offsite and brought in and then and then attached. We're talking about full stick built with foundation slab foundation. I'm guessing. Uh, we do crawl space just so you can add on. Later. You do crawl space foundation yeah, too with that. Yeah, because wow. we want you to be able to add on later. Life could change. You know, you could be at. 493 right now or, wow. or 600 right now yeah and you have two or three kids you want to add on another bedroom yeah make it easier for you to add on because you know these these developments are just thrown up with the with the slabs very yeah. quickly yeah they're not made to change with you for life right you know, for life changes so. so even that like then that goes to that life concept like i said life changes happen you want to add on right you want an accessory dwelling anything Correct. like that you guys facilitate that now you brought up a good point because what you said which was very clear and very smart and very direct with people is we're talking about the cost of the house what we're not factoring in right now is the cost of the land Right. And that's always a potential. You know them builders. Oh, Kelvin, you know them builders charge premium for land. Dirt, they're not, God ain't making no more of that. <laughs> right, right. And I know, and that's the beautiful thing about our product. And that's why the, the partnership with MVB Bank worked out so well is because if we allow you to choose, if you know the house price, our house price is up front. There's right. no guesswork. There's no negotiating. It's up front. Right. So you know your house is going to cost you $83,000, right? But you don't want to spend but one twenty. Then you know what you need to go find for land. That's why the construction loan product works out well. They can be on our development or our land, or they can go find their own land. We have people working with right now between Denver, North Carolina, and Wilmington. Right. That, listen, okay, uh, we got a guy in um, Catawba County. He found um, a lakefront lot yeah. for 80 grand. Okay. Now we're talking. Yeah. And he, he's he's building a house. You know, you know what a bunch of people are saying. My my broker's MLS property updates don't have that piece of land on my results right, right now. Right. So this guy obviously got a deal somehow on some land, yeah, and yeah. now he's trying to keep it going. Yeah, and now he's going to put a six hundred square, five hundred ninety three square foot tiny house on it mm. for eighty three thousand dollars. So he's going to be on Lake Norman for like one hundred seventy thousand. Yes, and he's doing a construction loan. He's going to purchase the land, and then uh, we'll build it for him. Yeah, and that's what he's doing. So I mean, for the flip side of that. A person that had a twenty thousand dollar lot, right? They could be the eighty three thousand dollar house, yeah. Or, um, yeah, eighty three thousand dollar house with twenty. They, they're financing one hundred and three now. Wow. And that is what opens up the door because where the areas too of, of where you're looking to build, people are going to be blown away at the fact that they can be in an area for as affordable as you're going to make it for them to be, which is phenomenal. I think so. the biggest compliment we got was um, um, a lot of the municipalities around the county. Mm-hmm. We've been they they've called me to visit with them, mm-hmm. and um, so when we visit with them, they were like, "Listen, this is what we like. Right, we like that your your not just your product is affordable. Mm-hmm. It looks good. Yeah, it doesn't look like an affordable product. Right, and they were like, "That's what we like about it. This right, would be great for this area for that we have. 
but it'd be great for this area that we have because it looks nice. We're not this is just just because something has to be affordable doesn't mean it has to be um, ugly, broke or, down, or broke down. Just yeah. like just because it's affordable, people get that connotation as right. maybe poor people. Right. Like, okay, the average house in Charlotte right now is three hundred thousand. I think mm-hmm. somewhere around somewhere there. in that range. I can pull up the property yeah. right now. We yeah, like the city of Charlotte, not the not the 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 the, the metro number, but the city of Charlotte number. I think is around. Three hundred thousand for the average sales price right now, mm-hmm. and um, you can't. There's nothing affordable about that. Mm-mm. So, I mean, so city of Charlotte right now, looking once again at the Charlotte Regional Realtor Association April 2018 report, the average sales price listed for the city of Charlotte, three hundred twenty thousand. Okay, so that's amazing. You're three hundred twenty thousand dollars average, but now we're trying to say affordable housing is poor people. Mm-hmm. Nah, that's working people. Right. Three hundred twenty thousand dollars. That ain't yeah, cheap. That ain't cheap. No. You know that that's an exp- that's a high mortgage. Right. So, um, you know, so somebody has to be the person that says, you know what, we can make something. I'm not going to say this is the the fix all. Right. But this is a fix for a lot of people. Right. Absolutely. For the people who can mentally downsize. Right. And mentally say other things in life are more important to, to me. Right. Than having a big house. Right. That's our vibe. So, so Levi, let's talk more about the qualifications. You mentioned the credit score of 660. What are we looking at for that process of the build, right? Because a lot of people never have done new construction, right? That's a whole nother ball game. And being an attorney, I know the difference because this is what I do on a day-to-day basis. But most people don't know. What should they expect for that process of a new construction? Well, you know, it, without a doubt, it's a little bit more lengthy of a process. It requires a little bit more hand-holding. Um, but what our goal was when we teamed up with Keo was to make sure to sem- have this as simplified as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, a general construction product would require specific draws, and every draw requires a monthly payment. Mm-hmm. And as those monthly payments are brought to the client, what Keo has decided to do, Kelvin, was those monthly in- installment payments mm-hmm. of what the loan mm-hmm. And the how, interest only payment. Interest only payment. Gotcha. That each stage of that loan, each draw, mm-hmm. Kelvin will be taking the monthly payments and paying it on the, his own on his own dollar, and having it where uh, they don't have to be troubled by the client because we know how difficult it is, and it's something really difficult. And why we keep it as an interest only payment right. uh, for the client when they're building their house, they're having to pay their own rent still. Right. They're still paying their own mortgage, right. whatever it may be, this just reduces that, you know, additional overhead right. and allows the person to move into their house, not feeling that they're clammed with more debt. And I don't want to confuse people. That's not saying that if, look, if I come to you with, with any bank that does a construction loan, you're going to pay my interest only. No, we're talking specifically to the deal you've got worked out with MVB Bank and the way that you guys have worked together on this program to provide people affordable housing. Yeah, we're only doing this. With, if you use MVB, that's the only way we're doing it. Right. Now, now, then that begs the question, right? Because the average build, I'm going to say, is probably at least six months. I mean, for the for these for a normal stick build house from 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 a builder down the street that's doing a bunch of neighborhoods, or even the custom home builders, you're talking six months. What's your timeline, Kelvin? Uh, we can build in thirty to forty five days after you get the permit, like yeah, because it's, we you know it's on your land, right? You know, and we're not building a behemoth of a house. You can build in thirty to forty five days. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. As long as you're staying under that seven eight hundred square foot range, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So we're gonna t- we'll probably tell you forty five to sixty, but we can do thirty to forty. Is it that square footage that allows you to build it that fast, or or is it, it what is it that allows you to do Man, it that I, fast? I, I've been building and working on this thing for three years. We yeah. got it down to a science. Yeah. You know, so it, 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 it's it's you know um, it's one of those things where um, it's been so much behind the scenes getting this prepared. Right. Right. That yeah, we're confident in that, um, it, and the size does help. But the thing is, we're not using cheap stuff, so right. You know that 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 goes back to the other side of it. I mean, you know, putting in subway tile and um, the granite and all those things. It's not a cheap product, not a cheap process. You know, hardwood floors. Our hardwood floors are stained on site. I almost didn't leave the model home because you got nicer stuff in there than I got at my house. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, when I saw the appliances and I saw the tankless water heater and I see the, the porcelain tile and I and I see the Bluetooth speakers built into the pendant lights and things like that, 
that's stuff that that the average person thinks of as a dream and thinks that maybe one day they'll get there to be able to get that. But you're giving them an opportunity by making those compromises on size, right? You don't have to have a 3,200 square foot house to live nicely and to really live life, but still be able to have those kind of gl- nice glam points. See, see, one of the things about me, I like comfort. You see what I'm saying? I like comfort. <laughs> I like sitting on a couch that I can snuggle up into and fall asleep on. And that's right. what you're providing from a housing perspective is I don't have to bust the bank in order to afford comfort. Yeah, you can snuggle on that couch with your with your beautiful wife and then still afford to go mm. out to eat. Mm. You know, mm. that's, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's <laughs> mm. that's what that's what that's what we like about it. You know, it's, it's once again it's the opportunity, man. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I I, I can understand the opportunity because. I grew up the way I grew up. Right. Like, you know, I, I, man, where I grew up either, man, you lived in a, a, run, a old house or yeah. you lived in a double wide trailer. Yeah. And I've lived in both. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, until you get to the outside world, you don't know that there's other things out there. Right. Who would have thought? Yeah. Who, who, who would have thought that people looked at double wide trailers right. as something negative? But now you can go get a trailer on wheels. Yeah. That's 200 square feet and pay $85,000 for it. And there's nothing wrong with manufactured homes. It's just a different type of built home. There's a stigma in the marketplace about that. You can't get, you can't go to, you can't go to your local bank. Not unless you prove that it's been been converted to real property. And that's a process. I mean, yeah, that's a process. Yeah. When I deal with it on the title side from the attorney perspective, there are specific steps that have to be taken. Otherwise, your lender's not getting a title insurance policy. And that's a whole, that's a wrap right and there. I, and I think most banks now don't even lend on them anymore. There's very find, few. There's very a few. small community bank yeah. or they have their own little mortgage companies that they do um, that just lend for mobile homes. Right. But, but you know, that's the thing, man. We're, we're a house. Right. And so I tell everybody, you know, any question you have with a tiny house, just take tiny off of it. Right. And, and, and that's just a marketing. Tool. And that, that's one of the things that we talked about as far as being that 500 square foot range. We're not really talking like what people think of a tiny house, but for marketing purposes, genius. Yeah. Genius. And, 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 and the truth of the matter is, it is we're the only tiny house right. because we're not a tiny trailer. Right. You know, the, the marketing genius is the people who have people, you know, thinking yeah. that you buy a trailer. Right. And it's a house. Right. Or or a school bus is a house. <laughs> you, you mean know? I can't drive my kids to work in it? Yeah, yeah man. You're either RV or your or your mobile home at that point. Right. You know what I mean? So that's the I mean, listen, man, that's the marketing genius. Yeah. You know, um I you know, it's, it's funny because um, I saw where some organization was like, uh, yeah, his is not a tiny house because he has a big lot. And I'm like, Okay, okay. I'm a house <laughs> because, but so you're telling me that that 250 square foot house on wheels mm-hmm. that's in Montana mm-hmm. sitting on 5,000 acres. That's true. It's not, not a tiny house. Not a tiny house. Yeah, no, no. Like, li- listen, your so, math is off, Kelvin. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so it's like, you know, it's a lot of, because this product is so new. Right. That there's a lot of things, but I will tell you, um, tiny houses or housing that's, that's tiny or small. Right. Is the way of the future. Levi, real quick, we got to wrap up, but uh, and but thank you guys so much, Levi. Do does MVB Bank service their own loans, or do you guys sell in the secondary market? We service okay. and as well sell in the secondary market. So that's the other amazing part is that it is a loan that's packaged to be able to be sold on the secondary market. And I think that that is where if you're a lender in the marketplace, you will see that this is a legit product. If you can be able to have a financed situation with Keo Tiny Homes and be able to sell that loan on the secondary market, that is that's real stuff because that's what the ultimate end game is for most lenders. So for you guys to be able to have that in this product truly do that, it says something about the Keo Tiny House product. So thank you guys so much for being here today. I appreciate you both. Uh, I have no doubt we're going to have you both back. Uh, uh, one day in the studio. So All right, thanks, Justin. Awesome. Looking, yeah, so, no looking forward to it. Yeah. Keo tinyhouse.com. That's K E Y O tiny house. K E Y O tinyhouse.com. K E Y O tinyhouse.com. Check them out. Justin Kazepis with today's real talk. Today's real talk.com. Today's real talk.com. And I found something cool I want to tell you guys about real quick before I left. And I asked these guys about it here earlier. I mean, they're like, no, man, what you talking about? This has been around for a long time. But these auto mowers, these automatic lawn mowers, I just like cool stuff, you know, like random things when I'm going through like. LinkedIn or something like that. And I saw these automatic lawnmowers, so I found out and I started doing a little research. I found this video that Husqvarna did. Uh, and, and if you go to their website,
website, Husqvarna.com, and you check out their auto mower, check out How Does It Work and the video they have. We're going to put the link up on todaysrealtalk.com. You got to check this out. It's just the coolest thing ever. Now, I've only got like a 10 by 10 patch of grass, uh, but I would get this anyway just to see what the neighbors do and just you know see, what, see how they feel about it. So I appreciate you guys joining us today. I'm going to put these resources once again on the podcast website, todaysrealtalk.com. If you're a game changer, if you're a game changer, head on over there. Tell us about you. We'd love to get you on here. Until next time, guys, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. I'm Justin Kazepas. Have a nice day.